After 53 years, a DSLR camera is launched to the moon on an Artemis rocket. Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much once again joining me for Tea Time. Today we have a little bit of Fireside. That smokiness is so good, guys. So good. I hope you're joining me with your cup of tea, maybe a cup of coffee, hanging out, talking tech, talking photo, talking video. Today is a photo day. Kinda. I guess it's kind of photo tech. Then again, everything today is tech, right? All of our cameras are high-end technical devices, right? They are basically computers. The processors and cameras today are more powerful than the processors in the computers that I used to use when I was a kid. Anyways, guys, this is a very interesting article. I read it over on Petapixel as well as on NASA's blog and a few other places. I wanna just cobble this together for you. I think it is fascinating. And yes, we did just launch a DSLR, actually many cameras, but yes, a DSLR to the moon. And it will be there momentarily, all right? And then once the rocket gets to the moon and we take all of the pictures, it's gonna come back down to Earth and we'll be able to see all of the images that were not sent to us already. And I think it's a 25.5 day round trip, if I remember correctly, which is amazing. Anyways, before I get into this, I wanna say that if you haven't downloaded any of my eBooks as of yet, go check them out. Go over to jchristina.com forward slash books. Also, if you enjoy this video, even in the least, please consider giving it a thumbs up and then subscribe to the channel and click this little button over here. So when I go live or when a new video comes out, you will be notified of it immediately. So the title of this article is NASA's Orion will soon capture new views of the earth and moon. Well, the one thing that a lot of people are waiting for is the Earth rising photo. And I'm going to get into that in just a second. That is a big, big photo. And I'm sure a lot of you have seen it. You can see the moon right here. And just above it, you can see about half of the planet, our planet, the little blue marble out there, which is an amazing shot. And I think that shot was captured in 1968, 1969, right around the time when I was born. I was born at the time when we landed on the moon. Now, there's a lot of people that think that we never landed on the moon and everything you saw was green screen and there is no satellites out there. That's just completely fake too. There's no rockets that launch and there's a lot of stuff. There's, you know, flat earth people and all the rest of this stuff. Well, to each his own. We got to the moon, there's pictures of it. We know that we've been there and we're going back. And this mission, right, the Orion mission should be there momentarily to get some amazing pictures. Now, Orion has a ton of cameras that we're gonna be talking about on the spacecraft itself. So this article starts out, the Orion spacecraft successfully launched on NASA's Space Launch System, or SLS, which it calls the most powerful rocket in the world and is on the way to the moon as part of the Artemis program. Hydrogen burnoff igniters initiate. Seven, six, five, four stage engines start. Three, two, one. Boosters in ignition. And liftoff of Artemis One. We rise together back to the moon and beyond. The Orion is uncrewed and will travel about 40,000 miles beyond the moon and return to Earth over the course of 25.5 days, during which it will capture multiple high-resolution moon selfies and Earth-rising photos, some of which are expected to be taken in the next few days. This is exciting. This is very exciting, especially the Earth-rising image. I cannot wait to see that. We'll get into that in just a second. There are 24 cameras on the rocket and spacecraft, 16 of which are on the Orion that are in place to document the mission as well as capture photos of the Earth and Moon. Now, the blog over on NASA, it states something like this. The space agency explains that each of the cameras is pre-programmed to capture specific events during the Orion's journey, some of which have already been shared. Now, if you go and take a look at NASA Artemis, their Twitter page, you can see the at NASA Orion begins the Artemis One mission to the moon. The spacecraft captured these stunning views of our home planet. This is amazing, guys. So this is exactly what you would see if you're on that rocket 
traveling that 40,000 miles to the moon. This is our planet becoming smaller and smaller in the background. That is, I mean, it's unbelievable to me that we can do the things that we do. The article continues by saying, quote, on the rocket, four cameras around the engine section point up towards Orion. Two cameras at the inner tank by the top of the boosters will capture booster separation and two cameras on the launch vehicle stage adapter will capture core stage separation. The eight cameras will cycle through a pre-programmed sequence during the launch and ascent. Now, if we look at this little diagram, this is awesome. If we look at the legend, we can see that it says external mounted cameras, internal mounted cameras, and then camera facing out of illustration and cameras facing into illustration. But look right here, guys. Yes, that is a DSLR right here. Sweet. <laughs> Why didn't they use a Sony A7 Mark V or maybe a Sony A7 Mark 30? or any other mirrorless camera? Why did they go with the DSLR? It's probably a Nikon, or maybe it's a Canon, like a 1D or something. It's something that's tried and true, that's gonna be able to handle a ton of vibration. They'll be able to handle heat and then extreme colds and everything else and still be able to get the shot. So they go back to a DSLR. I think that that is awesome. DSLRs are not dead, guys, they're not dead. Do I shoot mirrorless? Yeah, right now we're shooting with a mirrorless. Do I shoot DSLR too? Yeah, it just depends obviously on the situation, the use case. Obviously a DSLR will work for them in this situation, most likely because it's extremely rugged and they know it's going to work. Now the article continues with, quote, on the Orion, an external camera mounted on the crew module adapter will show the SLS rocket ascent providing the rocket cam view that the public often sees during launches. Another camera will provide a view of the service module panel jettison and solar array wing deployment. Four cameras attached to the spacecraft solar array wings on the service module will help the engineers assess the overall health of the outside of Orion and can capture a selfie view of the spacecraft with the Earth or Moon in the background. Orion is expected to make a close flyby of the moon on November 21st, at which time the cameras on the tip of the spacecraft's X-shaped wing will take detailed photos. One image that NASA hopes to get is a high-res capture of what is known as the Earth rising, recreating a photo originally taken by astronaut William Anders, who was aboard the Apollo 8 spacecraft on December 24th, 1968. Exciting. Look at this image. So this is back in 1968. It still looks pretty damn good, even today. Just consider what we're seeing here. We're literally seeing our little blue marble in the midst of nothing, right? Of emptiness, let's call it. Blackness forever, as far as the eyes can see. And you have this small little dust pile that we call the moon. And our blue, beautiful marble is just sitting out there, spinning away. And we just run around like little rats and little ants here doing our own thing and are oblivious to everything else around us in the universe, at least the majority of us, right? I think it's absolutely fascinating. I've always been fascinated by astronomy. I even took astronomy when I was going to college as an elective because I wanted to learn more. I ended up buying a big 12 inch mirrored telescope to be able to look at these objects in the sky, look at different planets and stars. I just think it's fascinating. I absolutely love it. It continues by saying the photo was taken by a human from the moon, Forbes explains, but wasn't actually the first Earth rising image ever taken. The honor goes to the Lunar Orbiter probe, which captured a photo on August 23rd, 1966. But look at the difference. That probe image is pretty much crap in comparison to the image that was actually taken by the astronaut on the moon. So we'll give the probe credit, but it's definitely not as good. The photos and video that Orion will capture will come in a variety of formats, ranging from standard definition to upwards of 4K. That's exciting. 
NASA says each is tailored for a specific use and take into consideration available bandwidth since the footage needs to be sent back to Earth. But all footage will be stored on board the spacecraft and retrieved after Orion returns. Another factor to consider is that while the cameras will be taking new photos of the moon and Earth, that isn't their original intention. And the field of view of each camera is optimized to look at the spacecraft and not at the space around it. Now, finally, there's a quote from one of the leads of the Orion program at the NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston, Houston, Texas. It says, a lot of folks have an impression of the Earth rising based on the classic Apollo 8 shot. Images captured during the mission will be different than what humanity saw during Apollo missions, but capturing milestone events such as Earth rising, Orion's farthest distance from Earth, and lunar flybys will be a high priority. This is so awesome to me. I am just excited. I cannot wait to see all of these images and the videos come back. Remember, our technology is so far advanced to what it was back in 1968, 1969. We literally made it to the moon using slide rules. We didn't have computers. The computers that we had were actually people that were really good at mathematics. Those were the computers. So now that we have the computers that we do, I've always thought it was really strange that we never made it back to the moon. It's been what, 53, 54 years now? Why? Our computers are so, so much more advanced. Our rockets are more advanced. We see Elon Musk launching rockets like if they're going out of style, like if he was a little kid launching them up with parachutes coming back down, technically, and then landing on drone boats and grabbing the rocket itself and bringing it back to be reloaded with fuel to use again. I mean, it's craziness. We used to launch rockets. They would fall back into the ocean and that would be it. They're gone. Now we're actually reusing them. They're turning these things around continuously. So this Orion project, I think, is going to be Definitely something that is, I would say, eye-opening. We're going to see things that we've never seen before, and we're going to be able to see them in high resolution. Not just SD, but HD, and what they're saying possibly in 4K. And it is exciting to me to see that there is a DSLR on board, and it's not a standard mirrorless camera. Chances are they use CCDs for a lot of these cameras. A lot of the cameras that are used, they are once again purpose-built. It's not just like grabbing a camera off the shelf and using them. They are purpose-built cameras that are able to take a ton of vibration and heat and cold, right? So seeing that a DSLR made it up there, I think is great. Which one? I don't know, but it would be cool to find out if any of you guys have an inside track as to which camera is on this Orion spacecraft, let us know. All right. I think it would be fascinating. Is it a Canon? Is it a Nikon? Maybe it's something else. I don't think it will be, but it's possible. Let me know. Also, let me know what you think about this. I love it. What do you guys think? If you enjoyed this video, as I always say, please consider throwing the thumbs up. That would be very helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And finally, head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find all the photography tools I've invented for you and me over the years, and hopefully there's something there that you might like. And if there is, please pick it up and support me and my family. That's it, guys. I'm out of here for another vlog. Many blessings to you and your family. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you in the next one. Love you all.